I have this weird fascination with the GameCube. It's not the best console ever made by any means, and it didn't have the greatest library of games. Like, maybe just a handful of really fun games if we're being honest. And then, you know, loads of garbage. But if you were to ask me what my favorite video game console of all time was, the GameCube always comes to mind. Why? Well, after years of living in the mountains and thinking about this deep question, I think I may have an answer. You see, we weren't exactly the richest family growing up, meaning instead of getting expensive first-party Nintendo games, we got... Bear's birthdays in four days! I would love to give him a nice birthday present. Yeah, stuff like that. You know, garbage. But some of that garbage was of surprisingly high quality. Or I'm just nostalgia blind, that's always possible too. I've played enough of this garbage that I think I'm a qualified expert in this field. The field of quality trash games. I definitely may turn this into a series, starting today with the GameCube. Video games based off of cartoons are always a good start, and as a stupid millennial, some of my favorite cartoons included the likes of Jimmy Neutron and the Fairly Odd Parents. Let's start with Jimmy Neutron first, with a Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius. Oh my gosh, is this a game that was actually published by a big studio? Or a cheap Flash game knockoff? What's with the minimalistic title screen? Cartoon games are always hit or miss. And this game is, uh... Jumping Jupiter! Ion signatures can mean only one thing! Aliens! Definitely a miss. But gosh dang it, a miss that I love! This particular Jimmy Neutron game follows the plot of the movie. You know, where Jimmy makes contact with aliens and they steal the kid's parents to feed to a giant chicken. Yeah, that one. It's a really great movie, but not exactly something that works really well for an entire game. The game is a platforming collect-a-thon. Literally, there's nothing else at play here. The game barely has any of Jimmy's inventions to play with. You spend 99% of your time jumping on literal platforms and collecting random items. It's so bare bones and basic, like if Bubsy 3D was good, and that's not exactly the best compliment to give. However, there is something, something here that is really charming. It's probably just me wearing my nostalgia goggles considering Jimmy Neutron is on the Mount Rushmore of cartoons of the mid-2000s, but the game also has voice acting, which is great, because I was so excited to hear Carl Weezer. My inhaler! <laughs> that's swell, Jimmy. That's... that's not Carl. Uh... I kind of changed my mind. Where's his croissant? So, if you're looking for an average platformer at the tail end of the genre's lifespan, Jimmy Neutron isn't a terrible option. Now, onto the thing I did! With breaking the rules. In this game, Timmy's parents once again go on a vacation without him. Which is kind of weird when you think about it. What awful stupid parents leave their 10-year-old at home while they vacation? Kind of a dick move. Long story short, Timmy tries to make a wish that goes against the rules and throws a hissy fit. So, Cosmo rips up the book, I don't see how that helps, and Vicky comes across it, managing to make a wish. What is going on? So Timmy is taken to fairy court and has to navigate 10 worlds to find Vicky and stop her magical reign of terror. Gee, hon, I'm not sure we've got time to read comic books. I'm not sure I'm able to read comic books. Why do the characters sound like this? Did they record their lines at the bottom of a well in a toilet? Who are you talking to, lame brain? Uh, you're talking to your dumb comic? Anyway, the game is another collect-a-thon, but with more personality and pizzazz. Every complaint I had with the Jimmy Neutron game is fixed here. You get to travel through so many fun worlds in the Fairly Odd Parents universe. Level 1 is the Crimson Shin comic book, where you take control of Clef the Boy Chin Wonder, getting to utilize a lot of his special abilities, like the Chin Copter. Level 2 has us exploring the video game world, where Timmy wished that him and his friends could actually be in the game. Timmy is playing a video game within the video game that I'm playing. Throw in the blong! 
Every stage is broken up into three sections. The first section is your basic collectathon, needing to collect all the stars and crowns within a level. It's solid enough and doesn't drag on for too long. The second section is a mini game specific to the world you're in. For example, the Crimson Shin world has you flying around cutting off bombs off of hot air balloons. Sure, and the video game world has you playing, well, video games, altered versions of Breakout and Whack-A-Mole, just to name a few. And the third section finishes it all off with a boss battle. The game does a really good job of mixing up the formula for every world you visit, keeping things from feeling stale and repetitive. And the worlds are all favorites that any fan of the show will smile at. It's so great! I grew up with only Nintendo consoles, not because of any loyalty or anything, but just because it's all I ever had. So, I never got to experience Spyro, Crash, Jack and Daxter... Until... Spyro Enter the Dragonfly. Growing up, a lot of my friends talked about Spyro, and I never knew what they were on about. I already got a cute dino dragon in my games! But, when I saw this game at a blockbuster, I decided to give the series a shot. Wow! It's just a float, you scaredy cat. This one's not a good one, is it? This game is another collectathon. You know, the only thing my childhood was full of, apparently. To be fair, though, it is more polished than a lot of the shovel wear out at the time. It's just that compared to the other Spyro games, which I have since actually played, it's definitely on the bottom of the totem pole. I'm not too sure what the story of the game is, because during the opening cutscene, I was too busy being scared for my life! Please stop existing around me, it's making me very uncomfortable! That was close, Sparks. Listen, I think I may have figured out a way to catch those dragonflies. I'm being pretty harsh right now, but to be honest, as a kid, I really had fun with this game. Yeah, it has its issues, it's pretty slow and awkward to control with not much to do. But you know what? It's fine. That's it. It's okay. BIG ANIMALS! That was the transition. Rampage was one of my favorite arcade games. It had big animals, see there it is, breaking buildings. Fast forward to 2006 and Rampage Total Destruction hit the scenes. A new Rampage game on a modern console for a modern audience. The game wasn't liked by fans, but to be honest, it's a pretty big guilty pleasure for me. The premise of Rampage games is really simple. Break stuff. Break everything you see! There's just something so primal about crushing and destroying everything in your way. Buildings, vehicles, people, no mercy! The game does suffer from mid-2000s ugliness. You know, in every way. So what you're saying is that we've got 30 of these, these monsters running around loose somewhere! But the destruction is just so satisfying. I love punching stuff! And the roster of characters is huge! So many wacky looking monsters with normal people names, like... Kyle. Hey, you know what? It makes sense. Kyle and monsters are the perfect duo. It's not a perfect game by any means, and can get pretty repetitive since the pacing is kinda slow. But whatever! How many games can you play where you can eat someone whole while being named Kyle? Not many. I don't think. Oh, hello there! Oh my gosh, Shrek Extra Large sucks. This game is so bad in every way. I mean, here's what navigating the menus is like. Every time you do anything, you hear... The game is another platforming collectathon, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it doesn't do either of those things right. I think the best word to describe this game is cursed. Uh, hey, Oka, stop right there. Be you an ally with the Ice Queen? Hella cursed! I don't know how to explain it. Shrek is a thick ogre, yet he runs around like he's Sonic. Which is good, considering running around and figuring out what to do next is how you'll be spending so much time in this game. I just want to beat people up, that's what Shrek does. But instead, here we are collecting things. I'm not an errand boy, alright? I'm a delivery boy. This game controls awkwardly, looks horrifying, and will have you scratching your head while you stare at it just trying to figure out what's going on. And because of that, 10 out of 10. Those things perfectly represent everything about Shrek. And those were some garbage GameCube games that, for some reason, have a soft spot in my heart. 
The GameCube library is vast, so let me know your favorite garbage GameCube game in the comments below. And again, who knows, maybe I'll turn this into a series looking at all the console's trash games that have some quality for some reason somewhere. Or I'll just look at literal garbage, like Trash Pack on the DS. Boy howdy, I sure do love me some garbage. Just call me Oscar the Waffle.